Hi, it's Israel here with another episode of Path of Exile University, and this is going to be a lesson for completely new players. So it should be 30 minutes to an hour. And uh, yeah, this is for new players who are curious about the game basics. So what is Path of Exile? It is an isometric ARPG similar to Diablo and uh, other games that you might have played like that and Torchlight and stuff, Last Epoch. It is online only. That means that it does not have an offline client at all. Um, so you cannot play it on a um, Steam Deck and, and, and on a plane and stuff like that. I think you can actually play on Steam Deck though. Just need to be online. Uh, there is solo and group play. A group can be a total of six people. And it really rewards time spent learning knowledge. Like it's a very, very knowledge based game. So um, if you actually like take some time to study, uh, which is why I have a university session, then... Uh, you will be highly rewarded for it. It does have massive replayability. Personally, I have approximately 25,000 hours in the game. I think I just hit 20,000 hours streamed uh, or something like that. So uh, a lot. So yeah, new content and rebalance every three months. It's been four months lately while they're working on Path of Exile 2. But um, that's one of the nicest things, especially for me as a streamer, is that we do get content upgrades every three or four months um with a very large expansion usually at least once a year and we're currently experiencing that now with uh well we're not getting a huge content update in terms of new bosses and stuff they've completely reworked uh basically the skills of the game this patch so we get a way larger toy box and all the updates and expansions are free um you will if you actually like the game while it is free to play you will realistically spend anywhere between 30 to 50 dollars is the uh, cost of the game, and that is in the form of stash steps. I feel like that's pretty important to mention. Um, the topics we're going to cover is selecting the league to play in and softcore versus hardcore, um, temporary league versus standard, and covering loads of terms like that. Selecting classes, a build, and talking about the skills and how they work, because other game games just have them as something that's part of your class or your character. We talked about the campaign that's before the end game, and then the UI. Basic itemization and currency and talk about different external resources you can use to help you learn. And we're going to talk about some of the changes for 323, which is the current league that starts on Friday, Affliction League. So first up, this is what it currently looks like and uh, with Ancestor or Hardcore Ancestor, etc. And uh, that is the current league that is happening. Uh, if you're a Diablo player, this is the same as a season. So um, on the left here, you have standard. That is a default game mode and nothing ever resets or anything like that. So if you played seven years ago, your stuff is still there from seven years ago. Um, I do usually recommend avoiding that because since it never ever resets and there are uh, not a crazy amount of people, but a decent amount of people that do play that actively. They do literally have like a year's year's head start and you will never find anything like an item that will actually be sellable really. Like it's almost impossible to find an item that sells and the economy is very stale and unhealthy. Um, so standard is more if you are a returning Path of Excel player and maybe you don't have a lot of hours to start a new character, then standard is perfect. And then you can see that you have picks. So you can play hardcore. So that is basically standard hardcore. So it's just... The same as standard, but you you lose your character when you die. And in Path of Exile, you don't fully lose your character like Diablo. It instead gets transferred to standard. And that is always the case, even if you're experimenting on leagues, which we'll talk about now. And then Ruthless is basically Path of Exile's semi-answer to World of Warcraft Classic, where it's like a very different and bare-bone version of Path of Exile with a lot less in it and very little loot, etc. Very little power. Next up, we have the temporary league. So these are going to say Affliction on Friday. And then you have Affliction Softcore and Affliction Hardcore. Then you also have solo cell phone modes. They are pretty self-explanatory. You cannot play or trade or interact with other people in any way. Um, and the same ruthless options is for those as well. So this is what I normally recommend that you would play. It would be Affliction Softcore. And the way this works is that this resets every three or four months. And what happens when this resets is that everything is moved to standard. So if you're a new player, there's no reason not to play Affliction. Um, and then if you really got attached to the stuff you were doing and you want to continue that without the new update, you can in standard. But there's always all the new update stuff generally always goes to... Um, 
the, the, the new league that's coming, which is now going to be Affliction. And then Hardcore is pretty punishing. It does require you to learn uh, and, and know a lot about the game. Or if you're just going to put a large amount of hours in it, then, then this is fine for that. So a lot of options there. And then for Solo Cell Fund as well, this is very brutal in a way because you will have to hoard a lot more. Because there might be items in the game, like there's loads of different rarities of items and stuff. And there might be some that you really, really need for one build that you just can't find. And you could otherwise find it easily in trade and just buy it off another player and you can trade freely. Like there's very, very little things like Soulbound and stuff and, uh, in Path of Exile. So yeah, uh, you can, however, migrate. So if you are playing Solo Cell Fun and you want to try that, you can go back to Traily. Which, if I remember correctly, Ruthless does not have that option. I don't think you can migrate from Ruthless. But uh, Solo Cell Fun is something you can migrate out of. There. Now, next up, we have seven classes in Path of Exile. Seven. Classes dictate the ascendancy classes or subclasses available to you. So every class has three subclasses except the Scion that only has one. Uh, and it's actually not unlocked at the start. You have to get all the way to Act 3 in the game and then you find the Scion caged up and then will be permanently available to you. It is not something you have to unlock every single... Um, not something you have to unlock every single time. Uh, but... In most games, everything is tied to your class. If you're a sorceress in Diablo, you cannot use druid skills. Well, Path of Exile is very different here, where this only dictates your starting position on the skill tree and what ascendancies or subclasses you can choose. Everything else is completely up to you. So that means that you can be a witch with running around with heavy strike and a big sword, and you can be a juggernaut um a marauder running around with spells so that gives for a lot of cool combinations and we were always like discovering things as a um as a community so they, we don't have the same type of like archetype of classes you do have archetype of builds like you do have bow builds you have spell builds you have melee builds etc but they are not the same way and they're not tied to the class so you can start and learn yourself as it go and I usually, for most games, will recommend that. The usual, or the reason that I don't recommend this for Path of Exile is because Path of Exile has very limited and bad respec options. That's one of the number one things I think they should switch. Something like cheaper or free respecs during the campaign, because what very often ends up happening is people play around, and the skill tree is very daunting. There's hundreds of nodes on there. So people play around and they might be able to get all the way to Act 3, Act 7, Act 10, but then the later they get and the more they notice their build is screwed, then they'll maybe come to me and be like, hey, Cesar, and you were right, my build is screwed, how do I respec? And I'm like, well, you can't. Whereas respec in the end game is actually very accessible when you're like a veteran player and you can farm it and stuff. So in the end game, it's, it's very easy to even do a full respec. It's just early game that respecing is very hard. I always have starter guides posted on my YouTube and not only do we make a lot of guides ourselves and we have a team, not just me, that works on this, but we also collaborate with multiple other content creators because it's not always that I'm the best choice to make a guide for something, so I collab with people that are. That way we can always offer you the best guides. And always wait for patch notes. Um, if you see creators post build guides before patch notes, it's a very large chance that it's a bait, that it is not good and people are just Throwing it out there early to get more clicks. So, each class has three ascendancy classes. Cyan has one and is a bit of a jack of all trades where she can combine other people's ascendancy classes. So that is really cool. And your ascendancy class generally dictates the style of play for your character. So, sometimes you'll just get more of things and different ascendancy classes focus. Some will be damage oriented, some will be defense oriented. Or some will be just about like changing the way a skill works. And generally it is a large, large increase of power. And most of the time a skill will work very well with a few different ascendancies. Like a good example is I am posting Explosive Arrow on a champion, but it is very, very popular on softcore on Elementalist. It just doesn't have any defense, becomes very glass cannon, but very high damage. 
And the Ascendancy classes are acquired from the Labyrinth. You have a total of eight passives. You get six from the storyline and you get two from maps. You can have more than one Ascendancy active and you can change it within your class. So the champion has um, Gladiator, Slayer, uh, or sorry, the Duelist has Gladiator, Slayer, and Champion. And you can just go back to any of the three or any of the four labs um, while having none of the points allocated and you can click on the altar and it will let you um it'll let you choose a new one. And um you will discover that in Act 3. Act 3, you can get to ascend and choose your uh, multiclass, basically. Right. So using a build guide. A big problem, there are a lot of different sources, like there's a lot of different content creators, there are uh different sites you can do, and the Path of Exile has a forum as well. And in most of these places, there are both good and bad guides. Now, the problem is that you will not really know what is a bad guide. So try to see what's like the most viewed, most recommended, and try to read comments. Generally, people will be pretty quick to post negative feedback, although sadly, a lot of people will just delete negative feedback instead of improving. Um, but yeah, if you have a friend that knows something about the game, ask them to recommend you a build and... Ask them like, hey, is Zizarin's guides good? No, they're bait. Don't follow those, right? Then you probably don't want to play that. They're not bait though. They're good. Um, but yeah, build guides will usually answer your questions and stuff. And you can select a build based on a skill. So you normally like look through different intros and stuff like that. Hopefully they're showing the way the build works and the way it plays. And if that looks interesting to you, try that. Um, but discovering like fun and powerful underused builds is really fun as well but you will need to have some more hours for that so what we do for starters is we have very very low gear requirements like we try to avoid using things that are going to be super expensive if you're playing trade league so you know things that are in high demand and we try to make sure that a build works with the bare minimum that you just pick up off the ground and that it's also viable for solo cell phone because if it works on solo cell phone and in a vacuum, then it'll be really great on trade. So number one thing you want to do when you start is swap your left click. So your move only, um, it is a default attack by, by default. And you want to swap that to the footprints. Now that'll make that if you're hovering over a move and you click that, it won't move you towards the monster and auto attack it. It can be really annoying. You can get stuck and killed. Um, and uh, another thing, you can right click your skills and do always attack without moving. This is the same as in things like in games like Diablo holding shift so that it does not move you towards wherever you're trying to attack. This is really nice, gives you so much more control over your character. And the only skill you shouldn't have this on is dash. It makes you move backwards. However, it is absolutely hilarious to listen to new players who have followed the advice of always attack without moving, do the letter and put it on everything. And they're like, yeah, I broke my dash. I'm moving backwards now. And it's just really amusing for veterans like me like to hear about. So, you know, do consider playing with that anyway. Um... Here on the skill bar, you can rebind things and whatever. This is actually something even veteran players don't know. So if you hold control down, this accesses a second bar that you can add more things to. However, the thing that people mess up with this is that even veteran players don't know that you can rebind this. So for example, um, what's normally control W, I have this on um, mouse button five. So I don't need to hold control to use that. So an example of this for me is... I will always have my flame dash there and I always get asked like there's no flame dash on your bar how are you using it and I'm like well it's on my second bar and then people will ask well don't you have to hold control to use that and it's like well no you don't you can rebind that to anything you don't need to literally see them it's just good to see them to keep track of it uh for things like cooldowns and stuff but you can rebind everything there so let's talk about attributes in path of exile and how they work so every 10 strength gives you five flat life and you have both flat and percentage life. Uh, and obviously they like, you want a decent amount of both. Um, then it also gives you 2% increased melee physical damage. Every 10 intelligence grants five maximum mana and that's flat and 2% increased maximum energy field. Sorry. 
Every 10 dexterity, an additional 20 accuracy rating, and then 2% increased evasion. So how much of this do you gain per level? None of these. These stats do not increase per level. You do gain things per level, but not these. So builds this stack a single attribute as high as possible are popular for in game, but will require extensive investment. So that's actually something you can do. You could, there are literally builds for all of these where you strike, it's like 1,500 of a stat. It's like decent for a stat stacker. And they're some of the most fun builds you can play. Um, and you do gain a little bit of flat life per level. Um, so. Passive skills, you do receive one point per level and either 22 or 24 from quests. There is one quest where you can basically choose to kill all the bandits or to help one. Now, in current Path of Exile, it's pretty much every single build will kill them all because we're so tight on skill points for every build. So generally, you will get one per level and 24. And um, the other bandits can give you things like, you know, resists and crit, etc. But yeah, skill points are very strong right now. We get eight ascendancy points, and they can be used the same as your passive points in your ascendancy tree. Um, to respect them, you will get something later called respect points. It's derived from Orb of Regret, and it is one per point or five per ascendancy node. So, uh, points do need to be allocated in a chain, so they do need to be connected to each other. And there are some unique jewels. Um, this is similar to legendary items if you're a Diablo player, but there are some unique jewels that will allow you to, let's say, access everything within a circle on your skill tree without being connected to it, and they can be really cool. Um, active gems provide a skill you can use, cast, or trigger. So if you're coming from a different game, you may be used to like clicking a button that allocates a skill, and now your character has that skill. In Path of Exile, it is an actual item, and this is changing a little bit this way, where we're getting even more different items, like something called Transfigured Gems that will change the way a skill works. Um, and then we have Passive Gems, and that's also called Support Gems. So, um, for example, we could have Fireball, right? Very standard action role-playing game skill. You right-click, and you're shooting fire towards your enemies. You can link that with lesser multiple projectiles, and now you're shooting more projectiles. And then you could change and alter the way things work. You can make the AOE bigger. You can make them ricochet between monsters. And yeah, loads of cool things. And you can acquire skill gems with quest rewards, gem vendors, drops, or you can trade with other players. And this is obviously going to be very applicable for this league with the new thing coming, which we will explain later. So some skill gems are locked behind certain classes from vendors. However, there is a vendor in Act 3 in a subzone called the Library that'll unlock, um, once you've done the quest, it'll unlock every, every gem from any class thus far. And then at Act 6, there is another one, and that'll unlock Lily, and she will just give you access to any gem um, that isn't like drop only or, or gotten in a specific circumstance. Now, you cannot stack the same support gem. So, for example, let's say that I have raised zombies. I cannot stack three gems of increased minion damage. Right. So, when buying a support gem from vendor, you'll be shown a list of active skills you already equipped in your gear, which can be supported by that support. So, it'll, it'll tell you and give you some info. And if you look at the top of the gem, it'll also show you the tags and it will highlight like this. So if you look on the left, you can see that the two highlighted gems are linked together and the third one doesn't do anything or isn't interacting with at least everything there. Um, it depends which one you hold over. But uh, everything there on the right one is like together and working together. So. They're generally separated by the scaling, so the attribute requirement, which is dex, int, strength, or hybrid. And then you have skill types like attack, spell, aura, curse, active, passive. And then there are different types like projectile, mine, totem, minion. Uh, totem is basically similar to the Hydra in Diablo 2, but you can do that with like any, any gems. So you could have a fireball totem, explosive arrow totem, loads of different things. And that's why like what's so cool about Path of Exile is it really is such a huge toy box for you to play around with stuff. Um, it's really interesting. So all skill gems have that tag below their name and it'll tell you the compatibility of gems. So 
generally if like if something has aoe on the support gem and the actual gem has aoe like for example arc has projectile and no aoe that means that i cannot do increased area of effect on arc it just won't support it or do anything um whereas pulverize is a melee aoe support gem that will do more damage less attack speed but the area of effect will be bigger um and that will work on ground slam but not dual strike like so it is pretty self-explanatory, especially once you have the tag system to help you. Um, you will also see like a letter will be added to the gem in your toolbar. So if it doesn't add a letter, it doesn't work. Um, and you don't need everything to match, right? So something will work with both AOE and projectile, then it's fine. And sometimes it'll only need spell or it'll only need attack. Like here are some examples. So fireball has projectile, spell, AOE, and fire. So that's all the things you can go with. So um, spell gems are very, very strong. And most of my league starters will be um, something that gains damage per level. There are attacks, like for example, explosive arrow and elemental hit that will actually scale with level, but in Path of Exile, most attack gems are scaled based on your, your weapon and actually scaling like that, whereas spells will gain a large amount of scaling just by leveling. And that makes it such a good thing to league start with, because if you're feeling really weak as a new player, there's a feature where you can hold control down while entering a zone and just restart the entire zone. You can stay there, gain some levels, and then you're getting loads of damage just by leveling and, and leveling up your gem. And leveling up your gem is very important in Path of Exile as well. You will need things like stats, like Fireball will need intelligence. So make sure you have enough of that to keep leveling your gem. And they do not gain experience when they are stuck waiting to level. Um, but yeah, so here we would gain damage from fire damage. Um, if it's a chaos skill, then it'll be chaos damage over time multiplier. There's things like elemental damage, spell damage. Uh, critical strike chance for spells and there are very very different reasons to use all of them and stuff and generally a build guide will go into detail for the build that you've chosen and explain why we're like scaling different things like that um attack gems they mostly scale from the base damage and uh with the exceptions that i mentioned and then you can gain things like physical damage and let's say that we're doing a bow physical physical attack like split arrow maybe for leveling and if you are scaling physical, then you want to have both flat physical and percentage physical on your weapon. And they'll sort of like work in tandem and, and buff each other, sort of. You also have increased damage with attacks, attack speed, projectile damage, or elemental damage. Um, yeah. So, loads of different support gems. So we have some examples here. So fireball and area of effect will make a larger explosion, but the projectiles themselves will not be larger. Contagion plus area of effect. Uh, Contagion is a skill that spreads other abilities like Essence Drain. That'll make the area become larger. Then we have Firewall, a lesser multiple projectiles. So it'll be more fireballs per cast, uh, but it'll do less damage. Then we have Barrage and lesser multiple projectiles plus Fireball. We'll make a bunch of fireballs in like a barrage. So it'll go like doo -doo 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 in, a, in a straight line. We also have something in Path of Exile, which is really cool, called Vol Skills. And this includes now the normal skill and the Vol version. So they're both sort of joined into one gem. And they'll give you two buttons. And the Vol skill is actually does not use mana or life. You can um, change skills so they use life. It actually uses the souls of your enemies. That's pretty metal. So you have to charge it up by either dealing damage to a boss or killing enemies. And you're like shooting their souls out so they're basically sort of like an ultimate they can be really good for bosses um throughout path of exile history there's been several times where you just will literally nuke a boss in the campaign with one vol skill so very very cool but they're very often they can either store a few uses or they um have a long cooldown so maybe you can only use it once every minute once every 30 seconds so it's not something you can spam and that makes them really good to use if you do come by like a stronger enemy. There is quality on gems as well. It goes up to 20. And uh, the quality has been changed a large amount in Affliction. Um, 
and we're not going to go into detail with what everything does, but you can hold alt down and holding alt is really, really beneficial in Path of Exile. It's basically the same as asking for more information. Um, but there's also transfigured gems and, um, yeah, different, different gem qualities now. So there's going to be a lot more to learn now. Thankfully, most of, uh, I think 95% of the league starters I'm putting out is going to have just the normal gems. So they're pretty straightforward, but there are transfigured gems that'll choose the way or change the way the gem works. Um, quality is achieved by using a gem card or prism on a gem, uh, or flipping. Um, so Path of Exile is vendor recipes. I'll explain that in a second. But a gem cutter prism is basically like a crafting component or a orb. Um, and it'll give one quality per gem cutter prism. And you can find these by playing Path of Exile. Um, on your support gems, getting those to quality 20 is actually a lot easier than active gems. Because with a support gem, once that hits level 20, you can sell it with one gem cutter prism. It'll go back down to level one, but it'll be 20 quality. So you just need to level it back up. Um, unfortunately, you cannot do this with active gems. And yeah, quality can either be beneficial or detrimental. So it is generally always good, but there will be some guides that will specifically tell you not to have quality on it. So sometimes that could be if a skill has unbeneficial aoe let's say uh it's pushing things further away and maybe you want concentrated damage as a good example so transfigured gems or t gems is coming in affliction league and they are a new alternative form and if you're familiar with labyrinth in path of exile already that is where we are going to get t gems um if you are a returning player, this is um, replacing lab enchants on helmets. It is also replacing threshold rules and alternative quality gems. So we are supposed to be mostly gaining things and getting more cool things, but they did say there will be some loss as well. Um, it does look like mainly buffs and power creep for us though. Um, for returning players, the number one thing that we're losing is our reservation change. Uh, like there, we, we will have it less auras that we can fit uh t gems are drastically changing how skill functions or adds functionality uh the best example is race zombies you can normally raise zombies to fight for you and they're running around and protecting you and killing you well one of the t gems for raise zombies is that they now just fall out of the sky they don't require a corpse you're basically summoning a zombie in the sky it falls down on your enemies and like falls flat on it so that's pretty funny. That is actually my league starter this league, and it sounds hilarious, and I can't wait to play it. And since it's completely new, we really have no idea how this is going to work or, or how good it's going to be, but it'll be fun. There isn't much extended information on the specifics. Um, I will be making videos and going through them as we get them. We just got our first batch today, so I'll do that later today. But I wouldn't expect most starters to use these, and... Most starters that are using these will probably either be really, really cautious. Like, hey, try this, but it might be terrible. So level a second gem alongside it um, is very, very scary. Um, so we have loads of starters up that are risk-free. Now, where do gems go? Let's talk about sockets and Path of Exile. You can see here that we have blue, red, and green sockets, and there's a link between them. There is also white sockets. And um, gems can only be socketed in the corresponding color socket on gear. So if you have arc, which is blue, that cannot go in the red or green. Um, it can go in the white. Uh, anything can go in the white, which is really nice. That's why a starter unique called Tabula Rasa is so good because it's just very, very easy and you don't need to worry about colors. Um, and sockets can be linked to each other. So this is what we call a three link. Funny, because you would think it's called a two link because there are two links, but this is in fact what we call a three link and this is a six link. Um, and let's say right now that I have um, fireball, increased area of effect, fire penetration and lesser multiple projectiles here in the fourth socket. Then since the lesser multiple projectiles is not linked to anything, it does in fact do nothing. So these links are very important for them working together. However, I could, for example, have um, Blink Arrow here without that like doing anything bad. So um, but yeah, so that's a three link and a four socket. Sometimes you don't want to have all sockets linked. So maybe you have um, 
Like we have auras in Path of Exile. So for example, there's things like grace and determination, which will either increase your evasion or your armor, make you tankier. Um, there are auras like wrath and anger. that will give you either lightning or fire damage. And sometimes if you were, for example, having a utility skill in the same socket group as those, and maybe the utility skill needs increased area of effect, that would negatively affect your auras, causing them to reserve more of your mana as an example of a, of a bad thing. So um, there are downsides to having things linked as well. So sometimes I might go for a two link, two link, and then have maybe an aura set up here and a utility skills here. So it's not necessarily always good to have a four link. Um, for the campaign, you can navigate it by clicking U and there is a world map. Um, there are waypoints providing you with instant teleportation from waypoint to waypoint. And they look like this when they are claimed. So that means that somebody forgot the waypoint here in the climb. Um, and then this is an unknown zone. It's a side area. So it's very, very clear where you're supposed to go and, and where your progression is. You can create a new instance with roll clicking on a waypoint or a zone entrance. That's if you want to like keep farming. So here we have progression and here we have the side zone with Tidal Island. And a very good tip for new players uh, in Path of Exile, you don't need to accept pretty much any quest in Path of Exile. The only person you need to talk to is Clarissa in Act 3. Other than that, you can pretty much go directly through the target on the quest. Now, obviously, as a new player, you won't know that. But even on your second run through, you might already know, oh, this is coming out next. And you can just go straight there, which is really nice because if you were like me and you were playing Lost Ark and you really hated clicking G, one billion times to listen to NPCs tell you about quests, you have virtually none of that in Path of Exile. So I personally appreciated that a lot. So solo leveling is the most common. Um, while you can play in groups, ARPGs are the genre of game that we just have the least amount of friends. And the majority of us are just spent trying to think like, oh, but you should try this game. Maybe you are one of the people that have been convinced by somebody else going, you should try this game. And they've finally roped you into it. Um, you can level as a group and all story quests can be completed as a party. And there's not really much forms of boosting because you have to go through the campaign and you have to level. And they're usually very like, Symbiotic. You are at a good level for the end game when you finish the campaign. So there's they're very limited boosting in Path of Exile. Um, there are ten storyline acts and an epilogue. So Path of Exile is one of the first games to move away from things like normal nightmare and hell that you might see in other ARPGs, and um, that was a very cool change. And uh, while you're leveling, you complete your lab labyrinths, which like they have like trials, which are. They're sort of like a tutorial for the lab because there's a bunch of traps. And they deal percentage-based HP and they sort of try to teach you like, hey, this is dangerous. Don't walk in these. And then eventually you can ascend. When you meet Kitava in both Act 5 and Act 10, spoiler alert, um, you will lose resistances. So you will always lose the same amount. And um, yeah, you lose 30, 35? I think it's 35. Um, extremely important. So uh, if you have 105 resistances in game, when you look on your defense panel by clicking C, uh, if you have 105, then you have um, enough resists. You lose 30. 30 resists in Act 5 and 30 in Act 10. After reaching the epilogue, uh, your end game quest arc begins automatically. So by clicking U, it'll tell you a little bit like what to do, like what kind of maps to proceed towards. Um, we do have a lot more about maps and how to get like the early endgame completed in the next lesson. So make sure you stay tuned for that after this. The user interface, you have an overlay and a minimap and it can be made visible permanently in the top right or as a full screen overlay map. That's usually what I do. Pressing tab toggles between those. You have opacity settings in the UI. Um, and you can move the map around with the arrow keys. So I usually play around with the opacity settings and make all the like the fluff and the appearance look like gone and then just have a clean map. Um, and then you can do numpad plus or numpad minus to zoom in and out. And there is a slider and you can toggle an option that lets it auto center by hitting tab. So normally I have landscape transparency on the left and map transparency on the right. That makes like a very, very clean map that looks like this. 
you can play around with this as you like uh f1 will show you your performance to see if you're having any issues support might ask for this if you're having huge performance issues um we have a mouse cursor that you can actually change the appearance and size without using things like yolo mouse or other third-party software um so there is like uh, i think i use like a bright pink one to make it easier to see your mouse uh, i'm getting old i'm 35 now so it's actually pretty nice uh, but there are like different ones for free and then they do have some bot cursors i think the bot ones are worse than the free ones though but there are some bot ones if you want to spend money on making it look different other things that are very beneficial clicking these which are off by default show mini life bar on allies enemies and above you are very very nice very good to have and we have different types of items and currency that are acquired from monsters containers quest reward and bought from vendor or vendor recipes so there's quite a lot of depth to path of exile the more monsters you kill the more items and currency you get item rarity and type are all randomly determined when an item is being locked behind certain bosses or fight mechanics um so it'll it'll basically decide that when it's dropping it whether it's going to be unique etc and Items dropping from higher level content can roll better modifiers, but they aren't necessarily better by default. You cannot have two identical mods on the same item. You will sometimes think you have because um, holding alt is your friend and will give you more information. But um, so for example, life has a hybrid modifier. So for example, I can't, let's say a chest has 70 life on it. I can't get that mod twice for 140. But there are hybrid mods that are, for example, life and energy shield. And then I might be able to get 70 plus 23. There are multiple ways to affect how many items can drop, like magic find and stuff like that. Let's go over the different rarities. So here we have a white or normal, magic or blue, rare or yellow, and unique. Legendary if you're a D4 player. Um, there are no set items, really, in Path of Excel. And a normal or white item can have no explicit mods, but we do have a crafting bench and you can use that on a white item, which is very important later. Uh, blue items can have two, so a prefix and a suffix. Uh, a yellow can have up to six, so three prefixes and three suffixes. And a rare item cannot have five prefixes and one suffix. There are some late game exceptions of this, but that's irrelevant for new players. And unique or orange items are completely preset. Um, there are some... I think the best example is for Diablo 3 players, it was a ring called Hellfire Ring or something. There will be some items that are random. Um, like, you know, to give you different skill types, etc. Or like buffs to different things. Um, but most items are preset. Like a Worm's Molt won't have any like stats that differ between Worm's Molt. And, and there, there are the minority of unique items that differ um, between the same item. But they are very cool. Um, currency and items. So they will either modify them predictably or unpredictably. There isn't too much um, where you can like force exact outcomes in Path of Excel, but we do have some. And it'll pretty much do exactly what says on the item. So it is important to read it. A good example of this is um, very often for a long time, I was asked, how do we know that quality of an item gives you a higher chance to six sync something or to, to link something? It actually just tells you. The item's quality increases the chances of obtaining more links. So just reading is very beneficial in PeeWee. All currency items can drop. No one is locked behind a vendor or a recipe. Uh, the only exception is something like some of the Engine currencies, like a mirror, etc., can't drop till level 30 ish uh if you don't play a lot you don't get a lot of currency unless you're lucky it is literally just like playing a slot machine the faster and, and more you play the more you will get um so it is it is pretty balanced depending on what you do now implicit is always a part of the item unless modified in some way the implicit is here for example in a leather belt the implicit is the life then you will have ruby rings where the implicit is uh, fire resist, etc. Then prefixes is the thing that comes before the name and the suffix is whatever comes after the name. And the affixes are explicit modifiers. So stout gives you life, replenishing gives you fast charges. Oh yeah, and um, 
a, a quick tale there are like prefixes are normally things like life or defensive things or uh on weapon things like damage and then suffixes are normally things like resist etc not always Flasks are super important in Path of Exile. They are not something you just like find and pick up charges for and you only have one flask. They are actually rollable gear. So your life flask, you generally want to have at least one of and it should be instant. So generally in Path of Exile, you're never like, oh no, I'm in the process of being slain. Help me. In two seconds, I am dead. I died. It is very like, oh, you're dead. Uh, so because of that, high reactions and um, instant life flask is usually really, really good. Um, and you want to upgrade your life flask while leveling. And the best life flask for instant ends up being the divine one. So um, they can also have two affixes, a prefix and a suffix. So you can have an instant life flask or a half instant life flask that removes your, your freeze. So if you get killed or frozen by an enemy or if you... Uh, get like bled and things like that. There's a, a lot of things you can benefit from flasks. Then you have different utility flasks that will give you either more armor, evasion, like defensive stats, or a movement speed or attack speed, etc. So there's loads of cool things. Uh, one of the best things, and this is maybe underrated by new players, is a flask called the Quartz Flask. And this gives you phasing. It feels a little bit like a cheat code. It'll probably the biggest difference for your tank or for your defenses because. Monsters in Path of Exile are very bad at hitting you when you run through them because they start, um, if I'm the monster, I'm starting to attack you as soon as you're like in my reach, but I'm attacking where you were. So if you're running straight through me, I'm just hitting air. Um, so I have several videos in the past where I've just like the difference of standing still in Path of Exile versus moving and moving through enemies is obviously very strong. And flask quality will increase either how long the flask lasts or... Um, how much it recovers from the life flask. <clears throat> a good tip is a iron ring and any skill gem will give you a resistance ring, a very selfless pointer, blue for blue, green for green, or green for lightning and, and red for fire, etc. So pretty straightforward. There are some vendor recipes, a weapon and a rustic sash. Uh, it needs to be either magic or rare. Uh, that'll give you a blacksmith whetstone, uh, or sorry, with a blacksmith whetstone, will give you increased physical damage is really good if you're doing like splitting steel etc for leveling you could do a um caster weapon with a chain belt and blacksmith whetstone and that will do increased spell damage and there's loads you can actually google poe wiki uh vendor recipes and and look through them there now very important do not use the fandom wiki it has not been updated in six years and that's just something they bought to gain ad revenue uh, it is not updated or maintained in any way. So everything is out of date on that. The PoE wiki is hosted officially by Path of Exile and maintained actively by the community. The crafting bench works on normal magic and rare gear, but it does need to have an open slot. That's why it's nice to do it on white gear because you won't... Um, let's say that I use a transmute on a ruby ring and I get 1.3 life regen, which is a suffix, and I can't craft lightning rest, which is also a suffix while it's blue. So... Um, and it'll turn it into a magic item if you craft on it. You can only have one crafted modifier on an item, except when it says can have up to three crafted modifiers, and you cannot craft more than a maximum amount. So if you have three prefixes, you cannot craft another one. A large portion of info in Path of Exile is gathered and maintained by the community and offered as tools. So we have Path of Building, very, very powerful tool. It's like a build calculator and it'll help you calculate your damage. It is a lot more accurate than the game itself. The game itself does not really show you up-to-date calculations on how things actually work. There's just a lot of things that can't be calculated. And while Path of Building can't do everything either, uh, at least build creators like myself will be able to do custom calculations for everything there. Um, so that's really good. It's ma maintained by a local identities team and multiple others. It is like a crowd thing. Very, very thankful for that. And then Peewee Wiki, like I said, a lot better than the fandom one. And we will end and take, is there any questions, particularly from new players? Any new player relevant questions? Not questions in general, just particularly 101 questions. Yes, this will be on YouTube later. Oh, you can also give feedback at exclamation mark feedback. 
Crafting seems really daunting. It is. It, it just straight up is. Didn't say anything about rare gear with the exact same name. True. Um, so if like rare items in Path of Exile or yellow items, they will have a name. So the name is not important. It is just flavor text. Explain the three mod crafting. So that is an end game thing that uses expensive crafting currency called the Vine Orb. So it's not very important for new players, um, but it'll let you craft that and then two additional. So this is useful when you really need two crafted mods. How does Fortify work? So Fortify, you're attacking a monster and building up Fortify stacks, and then you can get more maximum Fortify stacks. So I think you can get 25, 27. I don't know what the max you can get to right now is because my normal way of getting Fortify is being a champion, which is grants you Fortify, which is then a lot of damage reduction from hits specifically. What is the difference between more and increase? That's a great question. That is a very big difference. That is the difference between uh, it being multiplicative and additive. So increased is additive with itself. So let's say I get 100% increased spell damage and I get 30% increased spell damage and I get 200% increased spell damage. Then I have 330 increased spell damage. Whereas if all of those were more, it would be 100% multiplied by 30% multiplied by 200. So the more and more multipliers you have, the better. Whereas increase, they, they are still beneficial. And in a vacuum, let's say, let's say your very first thing on a level one character, you choose between 50% increased and 50% more. It does exactly the same. It is only that more will multiply your additive. So let's say that you have 1000 increased and 30% more, 30% more, then it'll be 1000 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 30. Oh, your EA guy just got the first Ascensi. So the first Ascensi on EA does nothing until you get the one that gives Fortify. Armor Innovation. Armor Innovation is, uh, evasion is that you get hit less by monsters and there is entropy. It's really interesting. That means that no matter what, like you can never have a streak. Um, let's say that you have 75% chance to dodge something, uh, right? You would think that there is a universe where, you know, like the, the monkey typewriter Harry Potter meme where, you know, eventually in infinite history of time, you would have a streak where you would never get hit for a year. That can't happen. And that's because for there's entropy. So with evasion in Path of Exile, it'll basically, it's, it's a very complicated, but a TLDR is it'll choose a number. And let's say based on your evasion, you might get hit every seven hits or you might get hit every four hits or every 10 hits. But with evasion, it's really nice to know that you can never be hit twice in a row with enough evasion. So let's say you have 30,000 evasion. It might choose something like every seven hits you get hit. So this is really good. And that means that most evasion builds will build loads of evasion and enough to tank one hit and make sure that you're back up for the next one. Um, so we have items in Path of Exile that like if you hit once every four seconds, you take less damage. Yeah, it prevents bad luck streaks. Whereas there is another stat in Path of Exile, which used to be more prevalent, but still is a little bit in the game, called Dodge. And Dodge has no entropy. So with 75% spell dodge, you could have a streak of not getting hit by 100 spells in a row. And you could get hit six times in a row. Um, armor is a little bit confusing. I actually have a command in my channel because armor gets asked about a lot. And uh, it does not grant the percentage reduction to physical that the tooltip states. So it'll actually tell you in-game physical damage reduction based on your armor, but that is a vicious lie. It has nothing to do with your physical damage reduction at all. Uh, there's a hidden mechanic where armor only grants 10% of the armor rating as reduction. So it's really good for small hits and you can go up to 90% physical damage reduction um, on small hits, but a large hit like hitting you for 30,000 damage, armor is probably going to do very little. Armor increased and evasion stack on flask. Yes. But not only, you can't have armor on two flasks in evasion, but you can have armor and evasion. Is this why most endgame armor supports uh, physical fist to elemental? Yes. How can you tank huge stamps then? So you have endurance charges will give percentage physical mitigation. Um, we can do damage shifting. It's a little bit more complicated. That's why we don't have it in this. But let's say that I have zero armor and zero physical resistance, right? I have no like endurance charges or anything. 
Um, but what I do is I can do 50% of physical damage taken as lightning from a lightning coil. Now, if I'm about to take 1,000 damage, I'll still take the 500 physical. But 500 is now taken as lightning. And we pretty much always go for at least 75 lightning, fire, and cold. So now I'm now mitigating half of that on my... Um, um, 75 lightning and the remainder is also mitigated more by armor because it's a smaller amount so it's doubly good but yeah i think that's the main ones we're going to end because we do have another lesson coming up after this we are going to talk about uh mapping how to get your void stones and how to get your early progression sorted so if you uh have any feedback on things that you want in this session we obviously also try not to overload people in this but yeah um that's what we'll do is it useful to go above the 75 alley res yes because there are curses like elemental weakness they'll uh lower you but yeah so thanks for watching give feedback at exclamation mark feedback and uh try to die less than i do <laughs>